I think there's, if you look at statements from organizations from the UN to the State Department to European governments to international organizations, there's general consensus that the, the, the peaceful prisoners of conscience should not be in prison. However, the problem is that those statements aren't being acted on. And I think it's, it's, it's requisite for organizations working in human rights, but also sort of wider bodies of, of coalitions of solidarity to start putting ever more pressure uh, at local level, at, sort of at national level, but also turning to the international bodies, at, you know, the UN Human Rights Council particularly, um, to try to get stronger pressure. Because there's one thing that, if there's one thing we've learned over two and a half years, is that the Bahrain government does actually respond to strong, strong pressure from those who are currently giving it immunity, and, and, and particularly I'm thinking here of, of Great Britain and um, the United States. Um, from the reports I hear, uh, both from people who are on the ground, uh, working in human rights capacity, and also those outside, it's, it's almost ever more grave. Um, and it's over the last couple of months, it's become quite frighteningly so. There seems to be a renewed crackdown on human rights defenders. Uh, recently, Najib Fatil, uh, who works for Bahrain uh, Youth Society for Human Rights, was arrested. Uh, he's reported quite grave torture, um, including sort of beating, suspension, electrocution, waterboarding even. And he's now being accused on Bahrain state television of, of sort of terrorist offences. Um, this is going back to the dark days of 2011. Yet, yeah, whereas at that point, it, Bahrain did have something of a spotlight in international media. Ever more, it's going on behind closed doors and in darkness because the media is being kept out or it's lost interest. And I think that's it's the problem here. Yeah.